won. Woo! Hey, what's up, you guys? Yeah, for the brand new jokes. Uh, yeah, I'm scared of death of horses, you know. Because yeah, I, I think it's like TikTok would know, right? And so when I look at their legs and like the way they stand and shit, you know, I'm like, oh, no way, right? Dude's like, hey, you want to pet my horse? I'm like, hell no, that motherfucker's got a black belt. No. <laughs> yeah, it's a new disorder going around. It's called Usher Syndrome. Yeah, it makes you blind and deaf. That's pretty uh, crazy, right? Like, I didn't realize how serious it was. You know, I always thought when you got Usher Syndrome, it just made you go, yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I did an open mic at this uh, gay bar in West Hollywood. West Hollywood. It's called the Candy Bar. Yeah, they don't sell candy there, but you know, all guys got lollipops between their legs, so. Jeez. Yeah, Joe Biden's so damn old, right? You know, Joe Biden is not even a boomer. I mean, he's older than a boomer. Oh. Yeah, those guys are called doomers. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden sold when he was a kid, you know, he was a totally different age, right? Yeah, it was the Ice Age. Joe Biden's so old that ghosts are scared of him. <laughs> and most people don't know that Joe Biden uh, technically wasn't born in America. No, he's born on the Mayflower on the way over. <laughs> yeah, I was eating pizza the other day. It's kind of depressing eating pizza by yourself, though, you know? It's like eating cake by yourself or getting drunk by yourself. Basically, my last birthday. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Hitler was a vegetarian. Yeah, I knew vegetarians were evil. I'm like, I haven't eaten meat in two years. Let's persecute someone. <laughs> yeah, the rapper Macklemore came out with a new pro-Palestine song called uh, Heinz Hall, or pronounced Heinz Hall. You know, I know most people, they're not paying attention to the war. They don't really know who Hind is or whatever. You know, I'm Generation X, so I know Hind's story, but what I don't know with Generation X is, who the fuck is Macklemore? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this past single to Mayo, it was pretty fun, you know? Me, I got totally drunk. And then I was like, oh, it's single to mile today? Mm -hmm. You know, peeing when you have a hard on is really difficult, right? Like, if you're outside, it doesn't matter, you know? But when you're trying to aim at something as small as a toilet, it's like playing skee ball with your dick. And you know, the whole, uh, whatever, little dick Asian myth thing uh, actually worked in my favor a couple weeks back. Yeah, this little petite French woman, like, uh, she was like five foot two. She, like, totally singled me out, you know? I guess she was thinking like, hey, look at this Asian guy. He probably has a lot of money and a small dick. Wrong. Yeah, you know, I had a normal sized dick, you know. I know, because I was in the army. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, it's cool, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not like, the, I don't have the longest dick in the world, but it is a bit girthy, right? So upon initial insertion, she was like, ah! You know, hurting someone with your dick is like the manliest thing you could ever do, you know. I could almost feel my ancestors like patting me on the back and shit. Yeah, yeah I suggest all dudes like uh, date women that are at least six inches or more shorter than them, you know? Like when I saw my dick in her little hands, I was like, wow, you know, maybe I do have a big dick, shit. And when I was with her, you know, I felt like a porn star and shit. I was like, yeah, maybe I get a porn dude. I'm gonna be E1. Ooh! Yeah, my little dog, she's really cute, you know? She's so cute that when other dogs see her, they go, oh my gosh! That dog is so cute! And then they go, oh my gosh, I can talk! <laughs> yeah, I was driving around the other day and I got pulled over by a horse cop. Oh. Yeah, it was crazy, you know? I didn't even know it was behind me until I heard this, woo, woo! And it wasn't a siren making that sound either, it was a horse. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to one of my Muslim friends, uh, he doesn't eat pork, you know? So he's always trying to pork shame me and shit. So I was like, oh, gross, you eat bacon and sausage? I'm like, man, I'm Korean, right? We eat dog, right? Yeah, you know, a scientist reported for the first time this past year uh, two male humpback whales having sex. Yeah, Hollywood's already gonna make a movie about it. Yeah, they're gonna call it Humpback Mountain. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's always weird how it's hard, so hard to make a woman orgasm, you know? Like, you would think when a man and woman have sex together, they would come at the same time, right? I know, not even close, right? So you gotta do all these little things and stuff, like, basically just go down on them, you know? But that's not easy either, right? Because nothing sticks out of a vagina, you know? You gotta, like, reach in there with your tongue. It's like lapping up a puddle of water from a small hole in the crevice of three boulders and shit. And you're sitting there like, eh, 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 eh. Like, 30 minutes and shit, you know? It's like a fucking part-time job. You got the hair all itching your face and shit. 
when you're done, like, ah, oh, hurry up, you know, like, what are you thinking about baseball or something? Fuck. And finally she comes, we're like, whew, you're welcome, baby. Yeah, it's, it's weird how language changes over time, right? Like, uh, nowadays, if a guy came up to me and told me he was going to blow my brains out, I wouldn't know whether to run away or pull my pants down. <laughs> now, you know the NFL has one Asian player, and he's a kicker. Could you not find a more racist position for this guy? Was he going to go barefoot in a karate uniform? <laughs> Yeah, I was watching this Bigfoot show the other day, and it struck me as how dedicated these Bigfoot hunters were, you know? They're like so devoted to something that might not even be real. Like comedians in their careers. Yeah. Yeah, I was watching the Oscars this past uh, Oscars, and uh, towards the end I was getting excited, right? I was like, hey look, they're bringing back the mummy. But then I saw, I was like, oh no, that's just Al Pacino. Yeah, I was talking to this guy the other day, he told me it's Persian. I was like, you're Persian? From Persia? He's like, yeah, where are you from? It's like, uh, the Han Dynasty, I guess? <laughs> yeah, the other day, or whatever, a couple months ago, I had this really bad haircut. It looked really, you know, you have a hair, haircut so bad that people start treating you differently. <laughs> I'm like, this time I must have a learning disability or something. You know your shit's fucked up when the waitress at Denny is tying a bib around your neck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy O.J. Simpson died a couple months back or whatever. You know, what the crazy part is the way he crashed the internet. As basically the second he died, half America got online and was like, who the fuck is O.J. Simpson? <laughs> yeah, this past April 4th was a new national holiday. It's a now National Burrito Day. It's pretty cool, right? And the very next day, April 5th, is now a National Toilet Clogging Day. <laughs> Yeah, did you hear about that bridge or the boat that crashed in that bridge over Baltimore? Yeah. You're crazy, right? The crash in the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's kind of ironic, right? Like, oh, say, can you see? There's a giant fucking boat coming! Yeah. Yeah, they said the boat came from Singapore. I was like, ah, oh, crap. Asian driver, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the news, they said the boat weighed 200 million pounds. It's pretty damn heavy, right? It was actually even heavier before. It was actually 300 million pounds. But my ex-wife, she got off the boat right before it crashed. Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, doctors are still full of shit, you know what I mean? I guess they always were like, you know, in the 20s, uh, people didn't trust eating hamburgers. And so when White Castle came out, they hired a bunch of doctors to sit in the restaurants eating hamburgers and stuff. And so people were like, oh, I guess eating hamburgers is good for you, right? Hamburgers are good for you? And then in the 50s, doctors were selling cigarettes, right? You know, in newspaper, magazines, and even television commercials. And doctors were like, oh, I'm a doctor, so I smoke camels, right? That's such bullshit, you know, because they're doctors, they know better. And then the newest uh, medical scam going around nowadays is that whole prostate rectal exam thing, you know. That's bullshit, you know, because I've heard a hundred different prostate rectal exam stories, and they all end the same way. They didn't find anything. You know, if it's so important, why don't you show me what to look for, and I'll stick my own finger up my own ass, huh? How about that? <laughs> but, oh no, we can't have that, can we? Well, you need a medical degree just to find a bubble up your butt? <laughs> I tell you, my intestines aren't the only thing full of shit around here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I noticed a lot of uh, anti-gay cultures are actually quite gay. <laughs> yeah, like Arab culture, for instance, right? You know, they're notorious for being harsh on their LGBTQ, yet Arab men openly hold hands in the street. You know, how hypocritical is that, right? They're like, don't act gay! La, 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 la. And Russians too, right? They're like world famous for being violent towards their LGBTQ. But I was watching the Olympics once, and this Russian gymnast, after he finished his jump thing, instead of high-fiving his teammate, he kissed him on the mouth. And it wasn't just a peck either, they were like really going at it. They're like, we did not tolerate the homosexual in Russia. Come, Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems that men in other cultures enjoy a level of intimacy with each other that we just kind of lack out here, you know? <laughs> And I have seen it a little bit, right? Because I was in the army, you know? You know, you know the army is very anti-gay. Because it's so gay. And you're constantly surrounded by other dudes, and you're like mostly naked out half the time, and sometimes you're just totally naked, right? Like the shower is a perfect example, you know? There used to be this one guy, he'd be in the shower every time with a rock hard boner. Yeah, at the time, uh, the policy towards gay people in the army was don't ask, don't tell. 
Nobody had to ask this guy if he was gay or not. It's all knocking over shampoo bottles and shit. Yeah, it's shocking, you know, you walk in the shower room, you're like, what the fuck? At ease, soldier. <laughs> and you know, in the army, you're supposed to be hardcore, but not that hard, not that core. <laughs> and I'll tell you a little story. You know, one thing I noticed is uh, cops, what scares them like the most, it's the sound of broken glass. <laughs> yeah. One time I was living in this really bad neighborhood, and uh, the cops had the whole uh, the neighborhood blocked off, right? So I'd like park down the street and like walk up to my house. And as soon as I get close to my house, some dude like grabs me, right? I'm like, what the fuck, right? And it's like some plain clothes detective guy. And he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I fucking live here, right? And he starts like talking shit, right? I forgot what he said, but like, he's just basically making me look stupid in front of all of my neighbors, right? So I'm like, man, fuck you, right? And so I get to my house, and I, whatever, I get a beer out of my fridge. And I'm drinking the beer, I'm watching it, right? And as soon as I'm done, I'm like, man, fuck these pigs, right? And I throw it. As soon as it shatters, you know, every cop is like fucking stiffens up and shit. You get all nervous, you know. You could like see the fear on their face and shit. And then within five minutes, they were all out of there, you know. And I was like, yeah, fuck you, get out of my neighborhood, my neighborhood. I didn't really see that, but just goes to show that any problem can be solved with a bottle of beer. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I was watching a show the other day about, uh, whatever. General George Armstrong Custer and his famous last stand at the Battle of Little Bighorn. I was like, Little Bighorn? That's gotta be euphemism for penis, no? Little Bighorn? It's like, here's my bighorn, and here's my little bighorn. Uh, I'll tell you this story, or I'll tell you this joke. All right, this billionaire, right? You know, he's, uh, he wants to throw a special party for his 50th, 50th birthday, right? So he gets a bunch of alligators and electric eels and piranhas and shit. He throws them in a swimming pool. And then during his party, he's like, all right, let everyone, let me get your attention, right? Anyone willing to swim across this pool with all these dangerous animals, right? I'll give him my house or all my cars or one night with my beautiful wife, right? And everyone's all looking around, right? And no one's willing to jump in, right? And all of a sudden, they hear the splash, you know? And everyone looks, and sure enough, there's this guy swimming down the middle of the pool, right? And all the animals are trying to get him, but he's so freaking fast, right? And just as they're about to swarm on him, he fucking pops out of the other end, you know? And the fucking billionaire runs up to him like, oh my gosh, that was fucking incredible, you know? That was the most incredible thing I've ever seen in my life. It's like, man, you, you, you fucking deserve everything, right? He's like, what, you want the house? You want the house, right? And the guy's all out of breath, right? He's looking around, he's like, no, man, I don't want your fucking house. It's like, oh, oh, you want the cars, right? He's like, no, man, I don't want your cars. It's like, oh, oh, I know you want my wife, right? Come here, honey. It's like, no, man, I don't want your wife. It's like, what the fuck do you want? I want to find the motherfucker who pushed me in. <laughs> How much time do I have? You have two minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll tell you another story then. Uh, you know my uh, therapist, right? I'm talking to the therapist, and he's like, he wants to get to the bottom of my drinking, right? I'm like, okay, doc, you know, let me tell you a story. Uh, one day when I was in the army, we were out in the field, right? <laughs> And then uh, I had to pull guard duty, you know, so some guy wakes me up and I get dressed and I go out there. It's raining, right? So we're not allowed to have umbrellas in the army, you know, we have to have a poncho. So I'm just, you know, I'm just getting rained on. So I'm sitting there, uh, I get to my, whatever, it's a machine gun sitting in the foxhole. I'm just sitting there. And then my wife, my watch starts beeping, like all crazy, right? In a way that I've never heard before. I'm like, what the fuck is this, right? And I'm like, and, uh, you know, because I set my watch to notify me when it was my birthday, right? Like when it was 12 midnight. And so I was like, oh, happy birthday <laughs> to you. And so there I was, it was, I was like in the middle of Texas, you know, some muddy foxhole getting rained on, singing happy birthday to myself. That was my 20th birthday. Wow. Yeah, so now my uh, therapist prescribes that I drink lots of alcohol. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll just end with this, I don't have time for anything else. You know, uh, comedians will always tell me two things, right? They always tell you when they just got booked on a show, and they always just tell you when they recently had sex. Mm -hmm. It's a bit juvenile, don't you think? Like myself, I haven't been booked on a show in a couple months. But I did get late last week, so hooah! <laughs> All right, my name's Ivan, I'm out of here, thank you. <laughs>